It's now a privilege to introduce for the for actually the first time publicly, and be before I do that, um, Sean is your new president of the faculty union. But let me uh, acknowledge uh, Ramona Skelly, who served you so well for so many years. Ramona, where are you? <laughs> Ramona, thank you for your great service. And the new president who I've had the privilege of getting to know pretty well over the last several months. He's an extraordinarily gifted young man who has passion and truly cares about this college. It is a privilege to introduce to you from the art department. Got to say that, right, Sean? Sean Parker, to give some welcoming remarks. Please welcome. Good morning, and welcome back. I'd like to thank the students who are here today, faculty, staff, administrators, and elected officials, uh, and esteemed guests who are here today for giving me the opportunity to speak to you for a few moments. Those of you who are on the faculty, I hope, have been reading my email updates since last spring, uh, but I'm very glad to have an opportunity to have so many of you here together all at once. Uh, so I can take a moment to say that it's an honor to serve as the president of your faculty association and to thank you for the opportunity. In keeping with the 50th anniversary speeches, here's one from the perspective of a relatively new faculty member and uh, the new faculty association president. Over the time, uh, over the, the summer, I've spent time cleaning out the faculty association office and going through all the files here in Warwick. Now let me tell you, there is a time capsule. <laughs> in those files, decades worth of memos and newsletters, proposals, grievances, telephone trees, and minutes, is the history of the faculty since organizing in 1972. I've discovered what some of you were up to long before I got here, and I found in that archive uh, something that has humbled and inspired me and revealed how much of CCRI is as it is because the faculty made it so. Of course, we didn't found and fund the college to offer all the students the opportunity for intellectual, professional, and personal growth while contributing to Rhode Island's economy and workforce. The legislature, lawmakers, did that. And where would we be if President Flanagan and his successors had not inspired the state, the faculty, and prospective students with the idea of the People's College? But in the enabling statute in the laws of the state, passed back in the 1960s, the legislature prudently gave the duty of, of governing this institution, its curriculum, admissions, qualifications, and rules to the president and to the faculty, with the approval of the Board of Governors, now the Board of Education. Because of that active participation, we as faculty, chairs, staff, and administrators, all came to be chosen by people who would be our colleagues. None of us are here by accident or because we have nowhere else to go, because it's easy, because it's just another place to work. And none of us are here just because we've studied, earned degrees, published, and have excellent resumes, though no one should forget that we have. <laughs> We're all here because our colleagues saw in every single one of us an aptitude and a dedication to offer a valuable college education to everyone who walks through the door, everyone. From students who have plenty of other options to those who face challenges that are barriers to attendance at other colleges. Every day, we embrace the challenges that that brings our way. And it is this that sets us apart from our peers in the state's other institutions of higher education for the last 50 years and distinguishes us from so many others who would direct this college without us. I'm grateful for the legacy of dedicated CCRI faculty who have been at the table to challenge and guide the direction of this college in so many ways that I can see in the archive. And it inspires me with the realization that we could, we have a responsibility 
to continue to shape this college. It may be a cliche, but because it's so evident in our history that we have a central role, I'm going to repeat the mantra uh, that starts out the year. Get involved. Heed the call to serve on governance and search committees. Use your strengths as educators and, as, uh, and your understanding of what your students really need to guide the direction and administration of this college. Please speak up. In your departments and in the college, talk to your colleagues about what's important, what needs to change, and what needs to be preserved. And here's my plug. Get involved in the faculty association. Uh, it is, history shows us, it's one of the most powerful venues that you have uh, to shape this school. Because the faculty, as much as presidents and boards and politicians, as we have for 50 years, can continue to make CCRI what it needs to be to best serve our communities, our state, and most of all, the people who will walk through our doors of our classrooms, our labs, our studios, and our offices next week and in the years to come. So thanks and have a great year. Thank, Thank you. you. And last, but certainly not least, to someone we can always count on to give a good speech. <laughs> And that is Jeff Heiser, President of the Professional Staff Association. Please join Jeff. Come on up. This might go on for a while, so I brought my lunch. Uh, thank you, Sean, for not raising the microphone. Good morning, everyone, and nanu nanu. In spite of what Dave Patton told you, lately the college uh, has been having some trouble getting people to volunteer for committees. So, I mean, let's face it, you know, modern life is pretty hectic, and most of us here are pretty much stretched and, and stressed to the max. So in order to alleviate this problem, I have established the Committee to Find People to Serve on Committees. <laughs> the only problem is I can't find anyone to serve on it. Um, we're, we often wind up having a lot of rumors cross our paths, so I'm going to dispel some of them. There is no truth to the rumor that in order to provide political science students with valuable real-world experience with how politics works in this state, that the college is developing an internship program with the state beach concession stands. <laughs> there is no truth to the rumor that after another marathon session dealing with kneecap, teacher evaluations, and other K-12 issues, the legislature finally decided to demonstrate its expertise in the area of higher ed by mandating that all classes at the developmental lead level be gluten-free <clears throat> Similarly, there is no truth to the rumor that they're also thinking about changing the state's motto. But the current motto, hope, I, for me at least, is just too depressing. I mean, <laughs> I hope the economy improves. I hope Social Security will still be there when I retire. I hope I get a raise. I, I think we need something that better reflects what this state is all about. Um, I prefer uh, Philippe and Jorge's uh, suggestion of mobsters and lobsters. Um, I also like flooding and poor drainage areas. I think that should be the motto. Or how about calamari for everyone? <laughs> um, you all got those gift bags this morning? Uh, just to let you know that my idea for the gift was a t-shirt with a picture of Hello Kitty wishing CCRI a happy 50th anniversary. Do you know who Hello Kitty is? No, he does. All right. <clears throat> Even Ray knows who Hello Kitty is. Everybody loves Hello Kitty. You know, if we could license that, I bet it would be a huge seller in the bookstore. We could ask uh, Eva Mancuso to wear one while she's doing the ice bucket challenge. And uh, <laughs> she could raise money for both ALS and the CCRI Foundation at the same time. You know, maybe we can just get a giant spotlight 
and uh, project that Hello Kitty says happy anniversary CCRI image onto that big round part on the side of this building. And uh, that way all the kids attending night classes when they drive up that hill, you know, they can, they can see it when they drive up here. Or we could point it at the sky for all the state to see, just like the CCRI version of the bat signal. <coughs> And uh, wouldn't it also be nice if uh, for the college's 50th anniversary we get our contract settled? <clears throat> uh, let's hope we get it done before the 100th. Uh, <laughs> imagine the retro check my heirs would receive because I'll be long gone by the time that happens. Um, imagine all the calculations that Sandy Casale Open Payroll would have to do to calculate those retro checks, which um, I'm sure would be enough to make any sane person thinking about retiring, don't you think? Um, in fact, she might need this. He thought my lunch was in here. Um, one of these things, okay. <laughs> which I found while going through the original CCRI time capsule from 1964. Um, they didn't have pocket calculators back there. Um, in fact, there's an inscription on the side here. It says, uh, Property of Ed Madonna. <laughs> you know, he's, he's been around so long, I think he used this to figure out the, uh, the check and the tip at the Last Supper. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, which one of you disciples had the biscotti? <laughs> And there is no truth to the rumor that the board, being so concerned with raises, wrote each employee's name on a slip of paper and then threw them all into a giant bag and then pick out a pair of names to see who would get raises first. Um, and the two lucky winners were, uh, let's see, President Dooley of URI and uh, President Nancy Cariulo of Rick. How about that? And uh, maybe they'll have another drawing next year. <coughs> In case you missed it, my main point is this. Uh, the colleges in the state have hundreds and hundreds of hardworking employees who deserve better than to have to go 26 months without a raise and having to wait 14 months and counting to have their contracts settled. The new board should make settling these contracts a number one priority so our employees can focus on making CCRI a great place to be in its 50th year of operation. <laughs> Um, and as for suggestions with regards to what to put in the nuke time capsule, um, I did offer a list of names. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Finally, <laughs> I know you guys are happy to hear that because those seats don't come with cushions, do they? <clears throat> I don't want you to regret having come here. Um, Boy, I, you're probably sick of hearing this, but I have my own version of the ice bucket challenge. Um, instead of ice water, just take that bucket and fill it up with beer and drink whatever you can. And if you want, you can take whatever's left over and dump it over your head. And in fact, if it's a really good beer, like a Guinness or a nice IPA, you can dump it over my head. Okay. And then you can write out a check to the CCRI Foundation so we can help those kids pay for college. That's it, kids. Go sit down, Jeff. <laughs> Again, to all of you, I, you know, I think we, you all know that we have some extraordinary leaders, very difficult job to be the president of the union, and each one of them represents you so well. I can tell you when they're in my office and we have these meetings, they put every issue on the table, we have a great dialogue, and ask them to stand because they represent you and they do a great job. Thank you, guys. <laughs> It's also a privilege this morning we have, you know, we all know why we come here. It's for students. There is no college without students. That's it. I mean, they, they make us. They make us smile. 
And we get excited at commencement when you come across the stage and you've achieved your dream, going on to bigger and better things. You make us excited when you do the accomplishments and the awards that you get throughout the, the year. And today we have many of our student leaders with us. So let me introduce them and the members of their cabinets, but we're going to introduce the president and ask the cabinets to stand with them. From our Flanagan campus, from the student government, President Gary Howard. Hey, Gary. In your cabinet. <laughs> Representing the Liston campus, student government, President Mike Palazzulo. Where's Michael? There he is. And his cabinet. Michael, what is it that we have in common? We are Sicilians. <laughs> the Knight Campus Student Government, President James Grasek. Where's Jim? And his cabinet. And now I ask our student ambassadors, who you saw today wearing those great black shirts and helping to help at all our College of Events uh, who assist us and do it so well and represent this college so well. Play. Let me ask our student ambassadors to please stand and thank them. <clears throat> so let me, before I begin some formal remarks, ask you to join me in bringing our commissioner to the podium to say a few words to you and welcome him. Let's give him that big CCRI welcome to Rhode Island. Welcome, Jim. Well, I think all of us have the, the, one of the greatest jobs in the world, which is really bringing forth the capacity within uh, individuals, young and old, as they think about the future for themselves and for their families. Um, I'm recalling really uh, Thomas Jefferson's quote, I was a revolutionary so that my children could farm and that their children can do art. And it's really that the American dream is about three generations in making. And in the modern age, it's not about going west. It's really about the, the level of education. It's about the opportunity and, and making sure that uh, the future is built on our own uh, with our, our work ethic and our education. So I'm uh, excited about being a part of y'all's community and uh, look forward to working with you all. Uh, you guys uh, in the... Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna learn this language. I haven't discovered how to do it yet. <laughs> but uh, we'll get there and I look forward to working with you and my door is always open if you have conversations, concerns, or great ideas, please come visit. Thank you. Jim, as they used to say in Arkansas, how y'all doing today? And what was the answer? Fine, thank you, and you? I remember it so well. Jim, really welcome. I, I think you're going to be a great addition to our state, and we look forward, all of us, we look forward to working with you and doing all the right things we need to do to make higher education the best it can be anywhere in the country. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for being here. Now, as you look around the theater this morning, you see a whole bunch of new faces. And if you look at the screen, you'll see more than two dozen names of people who have joined the college faculty or staff since last opening day. I welcome you and I extend some of you I got to meet this morning. I welcome you and extend my very, very best wishes for a long and distinguished career at the Community College of Rhode Island. And as you look at the next screen, you'll see something that's even more spectacular. More than a dozen people who had such careers at CCRI, providing almost 400 years of service to our college in the state of Rhode Island. I'd like to commend and recognize these valued retirees, thank them for their many good years of service. And in your program this morning, you will see several brief stories of why we are all so committed to the jobs we do each and every day here. Over the past few months, we've been asking faculty and staff for stories about uh, things that were meaningful to them, and we will share those with you as you read them. I hope you'll be inspired by them. I invite you to share your own stories on our 50th anniversary website and continue to share your memories in various ways throughout the year.